Uh, good morning, one and all. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Uh, Cheva Mahender. So I am working as an associate professor in the, uh, in Malaredi Engineering College. So today uh, I am going to discuss my topic is uh, dry corrosion and wet corrosion. Okay. So before uh, going to see what is a dry corrosion and wet corrosion, uh, first we'll see uh, we'll see the corrosion definition, right? So we know the corrosion uh, generally will take place for only metals, right? Uh, the surface of the almost metals begin to decay more or less rapidly when exposed to environmental conditions like gaseous atmosphere, water, or another reactive liquid medium. As a result of the decay, the metals are converted to their oxides, hydroxides, carbonates, sulfides. We know that corrosion, generally speaking, the corrosion is nothing but decay of metals. Corrosion is nothing but decay of metals. So why the corrosion, why the corrosion will take place for metals? Because the metals are initially extracted from their ores. Extracted from their ores means the, the metals are uh, in ground state. So they are in the form of metal oxides, metal hydroxides, are metal carbonates and metal sulfides. So when when we are bringing down to these metals in a pure form, that we are we are calling as extraction of the metals. Again, these metals are going into their original state. That state we are calling as corrosion. So simply, the definition of corrosion is decay of metals or destroying of metals and we know that the metals except the gold silver platinum or the noble metals will not undergo corrosion so why these metals will not undergo corrosion that we'll see in mechanism of corrosion but so far we learn that the metals the metals of noble metals or gold silver Platinum will not undergo corrosion, right? So we have learned the corrosion uh, definition, right? So what is the definition of corrosion? Corrosion is nothing but decay of metals or destruction of metals. So decay of metals or destruction of the metals means the metals are converting into their oxide form. The metals are converting into oxide form. So what will happen? The metals will convert into their oxide form. So when the metals are converting into their oxide form, the properties, the properties of the metal, ductile property, malleable property, and conductivity of conductivity of the metal will not be as such as it is in the pure form. So and the and the same, the metals will not be used to make the articles when. It is in the form of oxides, hydroxides, and carbonates and sulfides. So, if it is in the form of their ores, that metals cannot be used. Suppose, uh, example, if you see iron, so iron will be extracted from the iron ore. But iron ore, if you see the properties of the iron ore and the iron are both are different. So, the malleable property, the ductile property, and tensile strength of the metal for the iron it will increase when when we bring the metal into their pure form as iron so when we bring that into the pure form but again this metal when it is exposed to the atmosphere when it is exposed to the different conditions when it is exposed to the different temperature different environment again it it's react with oxygen and try to form the oxide form so when it is when the pure metal is reacting with environment or other chemicals and try to convert try to not try to convert exactly it will convert to their ore so that we are calling as corrosion so we stop we stop the process of corrosion by coating by painting and that the the, the, the technique of avoiding of corrosion will be different from metal to metal Right. 
suppose uh, suppose if you want to coat the iron if you want to protect the iron from corrosion so we'll paint the iron we'll we'll paint the iron so that oxygen will not be contact oxygen will not be contact with the iron if it oxygen contacts with the iron so there is a formation of metal oxide and it undergo the process that undergo we call as corrosion okay students so now i hope uh, you clearly understand what is a corrosion so corrosion is nothing but decay of metal or destruction of the metal or the metal are converting into their oxide state so that we call as corrosion okay so the process and we'll see the process of decay of metal by environmental by environmental attack is called corrosion okay this is a uh, official definition so example formation of reddish brown layer of rust on the surface of iron and formation of green film of basic carbonate on the surface of copper is called rust so reddish color will be reddish color absorbed on the absorbed on the iron will be because of uh, rust and the formation of green film formation of green film formed on the surface of copper is called also rust so this copper copper carbonate it will be formed with copper copper carbonate and copper hydroxide so this is called rust formation so uh, then come to what are the units what are the units of corrosion the corrosion of units the units of corrosion are inches per year the the corrosion units are inches per year or mm per year means how many inches has been destroyed per year how many inches has been uh, how many inches uh, has been destroyed per year or how, how much mm has been destroyed per year the measurement of corrosion can be uh, measured in inches or the mm okay so now so we can see this is the corrosion uh, corrosion process so we can see this is a metal so this is metal will undergo oxidation is called uh, th their formation of metallic compounds and releases amount of energy and again the same metallic compounds are metallic compounds so this metallic compound will call it as this is in the form of metallic ore this metallic ore so when we are extraction when we extracted from their ore that process we call as reduction so metal in its pure form are unstable metal in its metallic compound are stable so metallic compound are very stable so this metal always try to go into their original state so when the metal is trying to go into their original state the process we are calling as corrosion and this process in technically we will use in a chemical term this as oxidation and again the metallic compounds are the ores we are extracted from the earth crust that we are calling that we are calling as reduction and that process is also called as extraction of the metals from their ore so this is the mechanism behind the why the metals will undergo corrosion right so but different metals will undergo different types of corrosion depending upon the nature of the metal depending depending upon the environmental provided to the metal okay so we so effect effects of disadvantages of corrosion so we'll see what are the disadvantages of the corrosion the valuable metallic properties conductivity ductility and malleability etc are lost when the metal undergoes corrosion the properties like conductivity ductility and malleability etc are lost the process of corrosion is very harmful and causing for the wastage of metal right so when it is the metal uh, wastage when it is the metal undergoes corrosion that metal cannot be used to make any articles or if you made the metal with some engine that engine also loses its efficiency lifespan lifespan of the metallic parts of the machines is reduced the failure of the machinery takes place due to the loss of useful properties of metal the failure of the machinery takes place due to the loss of 
useful properties of the metal. So these are, there are so many disadvantages. So these are the major disadvantages which I am displaying on the screen. So, hence an engineer must understand the mechanism of corrosion so that the effects can be minimized by avoiding the corrosion conditions and provide simultaneous protection against corrosion. Okay. So what we have to do, we have to minimize, we have to minimize the rate of corrosion or we have to avoid the rate of corrosion. If you want to avoid or if you want to minimize, so what we have to do, we have to know the mechanism of the corrosion, how the corrosion process is taking place. Once we can, once we know the mechanism of the corrosion, so we can avoid and we can see the alternate route so that the metal will not undergo corrosion. So, first we have to study the mechanism of the corrosion and what are the types of corrosion. So, theories of corrosion. So, broadly the mechanism of corrosion takes place in, broadly the mechanism of corrosion takes place in two types. First one, dry corrosion or the wet corrosion. Dry corrosion or wet corrosion. Again, dry corrosion means the corrosion which will take place in the presence of in, in without absence of moisture is called dry corrosion. Wet corrosion means the corrosion takes place in the in the presence of moisture is called wet corrosion. So dry corrosion is also called as chemical corrosion and wet corrosion is also called as electrochemical corrosion. So why it is called as electrochemical corrosion? Why it is called as chemical corrosion? So dry, dry corrosion is simply Dry corrosion means simply it will be absence of moisture. Wet corrosion means wet corrosion means presence of moisture. And uh, dry corrosion uh, is also called as oxidation. Uh, dry corrosion can take place by three ways and wet corrosion will take place by two ways. So we'll see what is the mechanism. So electrochemical corrosion means when the electrochemical corrosion is forming, there, when the, electro when the electrochemical corrosion is forming, there is a formation of small cathode area and small anode area. And there is a formation of, there is a formation of electrochemical cell. When they, when the electrochemical cell is formed, anode will undergo oxidation, cathode will undergo oxidation. And anode, anode will undergo corrosion without affecting the cathode because the anode and cathode will be anode and cathode will be formed depending upon the two metals. The metal which is higher in electrochemical series will act as anode. The metal which is lesser electrochemical series will act as cathode. Suppose if you take uh, in higher electrochemical series means suppose if uh, higher electrochemical series, so lithium is a higher in electrochemical series, gold is a least in high electrochemical series. So if we, if we contact the gold and uh, lithium, so lithium will act as anode and undergo corrosion and gold will act as gold will act as cathode and does not undergo corrosion and from this we can understand the metal which is higher in electrochemical series will act as anode and will undergo corrosion and the metal which is lesser in electrochemical series will act as cathode and will not undergo corrosion so this is the mechanism of wet corrosion right so we'll see Again, dry corrosion. So first we'll see dry corrosion. So the type of corrosion occurs mainly through the direct chemical action of environment or atmospheric gases such as oxygen, halogens. Halogens means chlorine, bromine, chlorine, iodine, hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide, nitrogen, nitrous and nitrogen and anhydrous inorganic liquids with metal surfaces. If these, if these, if these gases are present in environmental, these gases are also called as corrosive gases. If these gases are present in environment, the metals will easily undergo corrosion if in the absence of this, these gases. Suppose in the absence of these gases, the metal will undergo corrosion, but, but the rate of corrosion will be very less. Okay, students. So, dry corrosion will take place by two ways. 
so oxidation corrosion and by other gases corrosion by liquid metal corrosion so dry corrosion corrosion will takes place by two methods this dry corrosion yes we know that uh, it will takes place by two methods dry corrosion and wet corrosion Okay, first we'll see like dry corrosion. So dry corrosion means oxidation corrosion by other gases corrosion by liquid metal corrosion. So first we'll see oxidation corrosion. So oxidation corrosion. We see that suppose this is metal. Metal, we know that metal always will undergo oxidation. So when the metal will undergo oxidation, so it gives rise to 2m2 plus plus two electrons these two electrons these two electrons will these, these two electrons these two electrons will come here and these two electrons will further react with oxygen and there is a formation of 2o2 minus and the first the metal will undergo oxidation by releasing two electrons the releasing two electrons reacts with the oxygen and there is a formation of 2o2 minus this is called as reduction and the overall reaction is two metal will react with oxygen and there is a formation of 2m plus plus 2o2 minus so this is called 2mo so what you understand from this one this metal is completely undergoes and converted into metal oxide so the uh, okay is it clear so the definition from the definition it is proved that the metal has been converted into metal oxide this is a process of corrosion so in dry corrosion means in the dry corrosion means without any presence of moisture without any presence of moisture the metal will undergo oxidation and will be converted into metal oxide okay so generally metals metal oxides to a similar extent however alkali metals like lithium sodium potassium rubidium etc and alkaline earth metals are rapidly oxidized at lower temperature so these alkali metals, even though the alkali metals are highly oxidized at room temperature also, but there are some other metals will not undergo easy oxidation. Okay, so mechanism. So first we'll see the mechanism. So mechanism means this is a mechanism. So when metal is exposed to oxygen, so we know that when metal is exposed to the environment, there is a formation of metal oxide layer. So once once there is a formation, once there is a formation, this is a this is a metal oxide layer is formed. Once the once the metal oxide layer is formed, once the metal oxide layer is formed, there are two chances: the metal may penetrate to this metal oxide layer, or the oxygen may diffuse over the metal oxide layer. Okay, or there are two chances. There are two chances to undergo the metal, right? So we'll see uh, from the definition, the oxidation of the metal occurs at the surface first, resulting in the formation of metal oxide scale, which restricts further oxidation. If further oxidation can continue depends upon diffusion of metal outside the, uh, out, out of the scale or diffusion of the oxygen out of the scale, but diffusion of metal is rapid because the size of the metal ion is smaller than oxygen. So in this case, in this case, the when the metal oxide is formed, the metal has to be penetrated through the metal oxide or the oxygen has to diffuse. But there are two chances. But here, the possible chance is the metal, the metal ion will be diffuses out from the metal oxide because the metal ion is a very small when compared to the oxygen. Hence, the metal ion will be diffuses out and will undergo further corrosion. So, uh, <clears throat> the na nature of the metal oxide or the film plays an important role in oxidation corrosion. In oxidation corrosion, in oxidation corrosion, metal oxide, the formation of the metal oxide plays a prominent role. So, we know that when metal when metal is exposed to the oxygen there, there is a there is a formation of metal oxide 
the formation the formation of metal oxide will depend the formation of metal oxide will depends upon whether the metal will undergo further corrosion or not suppose if the metal oxide if the metal oxide is stable first case there are four cases if the metal oxide is stable if the metal oxide is unstable if the metal oxide is porous if the metal oxide is volatile so first case if the metal oxide formed is stable so we can see from the diagram so we can see we can see from the diagram so metal when react with the oxygen so there is a formation of metal oxide the lines which we are which you are seeing is metal oxide form so this metal oxide is formed so what we are talking about this metal oxide is stable this metal oxide is stable so if this metal oxide is the metal oxide layer film is stable and non porous if this metal oxide is stable and non porous so the further oxygen cannot penetrate through this metal oxide the there is no corrosion why there is no corrosion because because the metal oxide is stable and it will not allow further further metal oxide to penetrate through it so there is no corrosion in the second case also if unstable metal oxide unstable metal oxide means when metal is reacted with oxygen there is a formation of the metal oxide this metal oxide is unstable unstable means again this metal oxide will be converted into metal and it is converted into oxide again the fresh metal is exposed to oxygen again this fresh metal is exposed to the oxygen again metal oxide will be converted this metal oxide again it is unstable and again it converted to fresh metal so in this case also there is no corrosion because the pure metal will be unstable but in this case in this case volatile metal oxide when the metal is exposed to oxygen there is a formation of volatile metal oxide layer once there is a volatile metal oxide layer once there is a volatile metal oxide layer is formed this volatile metal will volatile what is a volatile means volatile means easily evaporate into atmosphere or easily converted to gas so volatile means once there is a formation of volatile metal oxide it will be evaporated into the atmosphere once it is evaporated into the atmosphere fresh metal is exposed to the environment oxygen and again that next layer of the metal also will be converted into metal oxide that also will again evaporated hence in this process the corrosion continues until all the metal is be destroyed so this type of corrosion will be absorbed in molybdenum oxide so when the molybdenum oxide when the molybdenum metal is exposed to the environment uh, there is a formation of metal oxide there is a formation of metal oxide that metal oxide that metal oxide is that metal oxide is volatile in nature hence it will be evaporate into the environment and the corrosion continues until all the metal is exposed so porous metal so porous metal means when the metal is exposed to the oxygen there is a formation of metal oxide layer this metal oxide is porous means in the porous nature easily the oxygen can penetrate into the next layer also and the corrosion will continues until all the metal is destroyed because the metal oxide formed is a porous right so this is about the uh, corrosion by oxidation corrosion so now we'll see next one is corrosion by other gases so corrosion by other gases means if the gases like sulfur dioxide carbon dioxide chlorine hydrogen sulfide and fluorine are present in the are are present in the atmosphere the metal will undergo more corrosion in the absence of these gases means these gases are also called as corrosive gases if these gases are present in atmosphere the metal when is exposed to these gases it easily undergoes corrosion or the rate of rate of corrosion will be more if these gases are present right so examples the attack of chlorine gas on silver metal produces adherent non porous agcl which which is a protective suppose if agcl is agcl is uh, chlorine is attack on uh, chlorine is attack on silver there is a formation of agcl that agcl will be act, that agcl will be act as a protective layer so there is no corrosion okay if the same chlorine will be attack on tin metal that tin metal will form tin chloride that tin chloride will be that tin chloride will be volatile tin chloride will be volatile so it will be evaporated into atmosphere the fresh tin metal will be exposed so in this case 
in this case uh, the corrosion continues until all that tin metal is destroyed suppose in the hydrogen sulfide if hydrogen sulfide is exposed to the iron so there is a formation of uh, ferrous sulfide that ferrous sulfide is ferrous sulfide layer is porous in nature so if the ferrous sulfide layer is porous in this case also the metal the corrosion continues until the metal is destroyed and next one is liquid metal corrosion so uh, liquid metal corrosion is a uh, dry corrosion method the chemical action of of a flowing metal at a high temperature on a solid metal or alloys produces liquid metal corrosion when any uh, when any flowing liquid flowing liquid at a high temperature is in contact with the metal there are two chances the metal may dissolve in the liquid or the liquid may penetrate into the metal and under it will undergo corrosion so this type of uh, corrosion is generally observed in boiler boiler corrosion so boiler when the boiler uh, is operated uh, when the boiler is operated with a hot water so the boiler may undergo corrosion okay so next we'll see uh, next we'll see wet or electrochemical corrosion so we have discussed already wet corrosion uh, is electrochemical corrosion wet corrosion is electrochemical corrosion takes place takes place under wet or moisture conditions through the formation of short circuited electrochemical cells wet corrosion is more commonly than dry corrosion so we can see more uh, type of corrosion uh, more type of wet corrosion when compared to the dry corrosion right so these are the electrochemical corrosion so we have already discussed i think initially when uh, when we are discussing uh, about the wet corrosion and dry corrosion uh, we have discussed so wet corrosion will take place by formation of electrochemical cell uh, one will be cathode and one will be anode okay so this metal will give rise to m plus plus electrons it will undergo oxidation and gives rise to metal and electron okay but uh, wet corrosion takes place by two ways wet corrosion takes place by two ways evolution of hydrogen and absorption of oxygen okay wet corrosion can takes place by two ways dry corrosion can takes place by oxidation corrosion by other gases and liquid metal corrosion whereas wet corrosion can takes place by evolution of hydrogen absorption of oxygen so in the evolution of first we'll see the diagram the, uh, this diagram so this is a iron sheet so this is a iron sheet so we know that this is iron sheet right right so this is iron sheet so this will gives electrons when metal means it will gives electrons this is e minus and this is also metal it will gives uh, electrons and it undergo oxidation and this small area will act as cathode this small area will act as cathode so will this same and and this is a environmental this is a environmental h plus h plus will be environmental okay so we'll see so iron is undergoes fe2 plus plus two electrons this 2h plus means this will be present in the environment plus two electrons so gives rise to hydrogen so this is a hydrogen evaluation so when iron will undergo oxidation this fe gives rise to fe2 plus plus is two electrons these two electrons will react with the 2h plus present in the atmosphere and there is a formation of there is a formation of hydrogen evaluation of hydrogen okay so this fe so overall reaction of this first one oxidation and reduction will give rise to fe plus 2h gives rise to fe2 plus plus hydrogen so this is a reaction so in the same manner in the same way in hydrogen evaluation type of corrosion the anodes are usually large and the cathodes are very small in neutral medium neutral medium means water so water plus two electrons will give rise to hydrogen plus two oh this two oh will react with fe2 plus and this two oh minus and there is a formation of ferrous hydroxide this ferrous hydroxide will undergo oxidation this ferrous hydroxide will undergo in the presence of oxygen and in the presence of water 
and there is a formation of ferric hydroxide. This ferric hydroxide will undergo this ferric hydroxide and will this ferric hydroxide is also called as rust stable form. There is a formation of a rust. So in this way, if the water is there also, there is a formation of the uh, there it will undergo corrosion. But if in new, in acidic medium also, it will undergo corrosion. Right. So this is the diagram. So we can see this is a small area of anode, and the whole the all the area of this whole area of this uh, metal rod is cath uh, anode, and a small there is a formation of small cathode area. This is small cathode area, big anode area. So now absorption of oxygen. Absorption of oxygen, how it will take place? First, we'll explain with a diagram. Suppose when any metal is exposed, this is when any metal is exposed to oxygen, there is a formation of metal oxide layer. So this is this one is metal oxide layer. There is a metal oxide layer form. So this area, there is no formation of metal oxide layer. There is no formation of metal oxide layer or metal oxide layer is not formed. Or if the former metal oxide layer is removed. So the area where the metal oxide layer is not formed or the metal oxide layer is removed, that part will act as anode and the remaining part of the metal will act as cathode. So when there is a formation of cathode and anode, the process of corrosion will start. So how we'll see in reaction wise. Okay. In in by reactions by writing the reactions we can see how it will be happen right so when iron so we know that iron will undergo oxidation that gives rise to p two plus plus two electrons and oxygen and water and these two electrons oxygen and these two electrons which is evolved evolved from the metal will react with the oxygen and moisture and there is a formation of four OH minus. Okay, this Fe2 plus plus this 4 OH minus means we will take for balancing 2 OH minus gives rise to FeOH2. This FeOH2 further reacted with oxygen, water, and there is a formation of ferrous hydroxide. This ferrous hydroxide will be converted into rust. These, these both are same. 4 FeOH3 and Fe2O3H2 are the same. So this can be converted into stable compound that is called rust. So this is the diagram of that one. So the, the, here there is no formation of metal oxide or the former metal oxide is removed. That part will act as small anode and the big part, the remaining will be act as cathode and the cathode anode formation will be there. And we have discussed where the anode formation will be there. There the rust product will be there. This is a corrosion product. The black one which we are seeing is rust corrosion product. Okay, students. So this is a, a mechanism of corrosion. So what we have to remember is uh, corrosion is formed by two ways, dry corrosion and wet corrosion. Dry corrosion and wet corrosion. So dry corrosion can take place by oxidation by other gases and liquid metal corrosion. And wet corrosion is taking takes place by absorption of oxygen and evolution of hydrogen. Okay, students, thank you. Okay, thank you.